Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so this is talk about long longstanding problem in the block layer storage area of copy of load. Uh, it's been almost six to eight years. Uh, there, there, there has been uh, different attempts to solve this problem. So this is just an update what's been going on and where we are right now. <coughs> so the objective of this talk is to find a block layer interface uh, which can allow us to pass copy of load uh, operation down the stack, uh, maybe from file systems or from user space tools uh, using IOCTL interface or potentially from IOU ring. So it has several, several uh, constraints such as it must work with uh, underlying major storage protocols such as SCSI, uh, NVMe. Uh, it must fit into the block layer semantics and it must work with uh, stacking drivers. So th these are the, some major challenges or the areas of challenges we've been uh, discussing or we've been having since few implementations posted by Martin, uh, Nicholas, and from Samson. <coughs> so, uh, so it's a little bit uh, history of this particular work the way it's going. So originally Martin implemented a uh, single request of post uh, based co uh, copy of the operation. Uh, but then we came to know that there are several issues with it, with the bio split and whatnot. Uh, so later on, Michaelis came out uh, with two requests OP uh, opcode based uh, copy of operation. That seems to help us implement copy of offload for DM or uh, and deal with the challenges that we have faced for single OP. Uh, I think at this point everyone is aware <laughs> it's been like seven to eight years and it's all over the, uh, or all over the mailing list. So probably skip this part. So right now the preferred implementation is token based uh, which allows us uh, mixing copy of load operation with reads and write workloads to avoid DOS attacks. So this is the direction as opposed to the single extended copy command, uh, which was the first implementation. So it addresses the problems with integrating with DM and simplifies the command multiplexing uh, into a single bio uh, into many. It also simplifies uh, multiple bio uh, cases. And that's what the Michaelis uh, approach does. So the way it works is we submit the request OP in first. Uh, so low level device driver will store the ranges such as NVMe or SCSI. Uh, on successful submission of the first request, we submit the request OP out to execute operation with a reference to the previously submitted request OP in. And that gets to the controller and then we submit the actual copy of the command and uh, copy happens over the controller. So the current state of work is recently uh, uh, past series posted by Samsung. Uh, it has block layer generic copy uh, of code uh, with the multi, multi source and destination interface. It also has emulation uh, to offload uh, if the na native device doesn't support a copy offload. Uh, it has support for DM linear, where it doesn't require any splitting. It also has new IOCTLs and in kernel usage, such as ZoneFS, uh, copy file range, and kcopyd. So uh, right now, uh, with this background, we want to understand exactly what are the missing pieces needed to get this work or get this work move forward uh, in terms of block layer plumbing, uh, which has been missing or we should add. Uh, are we okay with a token based approach where we have two opcodes to execute the copy of load command? Uh, uh, any outstanding issues with DM implementation? So we have selected so far the minimal subset of DM implementation uh, and is that okay or we need to extend that area of implementation and so forth. Do we need 
to find Jens? Uh, I don't know if you saw uh, Dave Chinner email this uh, morning explaining his view on how to test this. So that that, that was one of the, the thing I, I commented on the series that we, there is nothing to test all of this right now. Uh, so we need something. Uh, I said I, I suggest a new block. Dave Chinner actually has a more advanced but useful ID, which is to uh, use loopback so that you, you can rely on the file system, underlying file system doing a copy file range to implement the copy of loop. Yeah, so, so we need something to test, first of all, otherwise it just yeah, it I, can't. Yes, I completely agree with you. We need something to test, which is in kernel driver and not the QMU side. Uh, for example, null BLK or uh, any other driver that we no, can use. Read, read the scenario email. He, he's suggesting, so again, using loopback uh, so that you can uh, rely on something that is already tested, okay. which is the copy file range from the uh, file system that that does the, that implements the storage for the loopback device. Okay. So you, you have essentially with that uh, a copy offload ready almost okay. um, driver that is well tested that we can rely on and we can, uh, with that, better test the plumbing and the API uh, of everything on top. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. that's the best approach. I still think that implementing copy of loading and node block uh, will make it easier to write test scripts and to integrate these test scripts in the existing block tests. Suit. No, of course, yeah, we, 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 and, and we definitely need to go there, but the Dave Chinner point was that uh, if we do that now and, and test everything with, with that, it means that we essentially also end up testing the, the new block implementation itself. So uh, having uh, already something that, that is exactly like copy of flow that is well tested for, for testing the plumbing on the, on the block layer, DM, et cetera, is better as a, as, a first, uh, as a first approach. But yeah, I, I totally agree with you. We, we need new block too. Yeah, so I think we need a loop copy of load implementation and null block copy of load implementation. Yeah, and uh, with the memory backend supported for null block, not just so we can add block tests around that also. Okay. Uh, I'm more interested in understanding on the G DM side. Uh, but again, again, once we have the, the loopback uh, uh, plumbing in place, you can actually uh, better test and so uh, evaluate what, uh, uh, how, how uh, well the, the plumbing in the block layer works. Uh, from the patches, uh, I had some um, concerns about DM is that I didn't see anywhere where the, the range, the copy ranges were being remapped to match DM linear or whatever the DM is doing. So that's something I'm, I, I didn't see yeah, I didn't really look in, in detail though. I may have missed it. Uh, Mike is on the Zoom and he has some comments. Can we get him on? Hey guys, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so I've, I've looked at the initial, well, there's been a couple patches, uh, a series of patches, but um, the one that is is thinking it's effectively uh, imposing the constraint that the uh, splitting is is not allowed and and so forth. Um, it actually is. It doesn't go far enough uh, because it, it there are targets that um, make use of the interface DM except partial bio. Um, which effectively imposes splitting that you, it allows the target to impose a split even if DM core uh, didn't do a, a split up front. So um, there's some DM quirks there that need to get worked through um, in terms of that initial constraint on splitting. I, I'd like to better understand 
is that just a pragmatic um, initial implementation that you'd like to just sidestep dealing with it? It's it's like it's <laughs> just an annoyance uh, to have to deal with it in a serious way um, because honestly, it just feels like a toy implementation at this point uh, as it relates to Device Mapper. Um, you know, you, you make mention of, of DMK copy D, but um, it's it's unclear to me where you'd like to see if you'd like to see a full robust implementation uh, that that full has full support for all the various DM targets. Um, then what has been proposed is obviously there fairly lacking in my view. Work I think like DM crypt uh, because of the the per sector uh, uh, key thing. Uh, obviously, I mean, I, I don't see how that can work with with DM crypt. Um. Uh, per sector key thing is, the, the, I I so guess I'm missing where that relates to the copy the, offload. You're moving data from uh, one place to another uh, without the data going through the host, so you're not going to be able to decrypt and re-encrypt with the new uh, using the new location. The 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 seed for the, for the key in the encrypt is the sector, right? So. Uh, you're going to copy encrypted data to a different location that you're not going to be able to decrypt later. That's what you're going to end up with with the encrypt if you do copy of load. Unless I'm totally missing something in how the encrypt worked, but that, that essentially was the issue we had with zone append because we always specify the same sector for for writing and we we, we had to, to go through the doing the emulation for, for the encrypt, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. Um. So uh, per target, we, 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 we will use that flag that says, okay, that, that one uh, can do copy of load uh, or not. And, the, and each target can decide, okay, can I, can, does it make sense to, to, to allow those, those uh, copy uh, commands to come go through or not, and I suspect that the encrypt is not going to be one that that will uh, that will work with copy of load. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, I, I'd I'd have to just dig in and, and look closer at it. Uh, you know, the encrypt aside, though, um, it, it's it just, it, I mean. <laughs> I don't want to dwell on this point. It's just like maybe the authors of the, the changes could speak to what their vision is for where this will go. Um, because it seems to me like DM hasn't been fully accounted for or, or stacking in general for arbitrary remapping of, of IO as it goes through, through um, the IO stack. Um, you know, like, where is it that you see the implementation? Do you do you see issues, uh, or do you <laughs> need me to paint uh, them out in a more painful way? Um, I, I, I mentioned uh, earlier before you you you, uh, you joined to chat and is that for so DM linear has been enabled in the latest series, but I didn't see where they they do the remapping for the the copy ranges so. Um, that, that's one point probably that needs to be addressed. Um, and the splitting, yes, um, fairly, I think it's possible to actually split those commands, uh, but if it's done uh, using two commands, a read and write, that may be very tricky, I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it. Uh, so if I, if I could make a comment here, uh, uh, the, 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 current, the current DM plumbing is actually same very similar to what uh, what was what was tried um, when it was attempted for CX copy, and while DM linear is 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 having uh, the support at this point, but but uh, the DM core has been modified currently, and uh, and it is actually possible to 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 enable the same flag in in other apart from DM linear probably it is possible to to enable the same flag uh, and use what is being done in DM core, but uh, the, the limitation currently is that whenever 
uh, we have to split, then, uh, then yeah, things, it's, it's gonna fail. It's gonna say that the, the copy is not supported. And that is going to happen more uh, with other targets and probably going to happen less with DM linear. So this is how, this is currently, this is one way to see it. So either we support or we should not support. We cannot say in the middle of the operation, we cannot do it. Once we s uh, wire up the changes and we allow uh, oh. copy sectors available through Q or oh. BDAV, uh, we cannot just fail it that, okay, now the BR is split, so we cannot do it. Uh, so probably one of the way to ensure that would be that we kind of, you know, uh, uh, we actually have the fallback, right? We have, have the fallback to emulation. So maybe for a target, uh, even if it, let's say talk about DM linear, if it is, if it is created on a, you know, plain device without having uh, a very jazzy configuration, uh, then it is going to work fine. But in case if it is, if it is, if it is based on two physical devices and a DM linear is created on that, on a particular IO, if it is gonna fail, the copy offload is gonna fail, it's gonna take the emulation path and the copy would be completed that way. So that's the current approach. Mike, you have any comments on this approach? Um, I, I would I would like it to not uh, punt to the fallback uh, trivially. Um, I so I need to review the patches closer. Obviously, um, I'll, I'll commit to doing that. Um, unfortunately, I, I didn't give it an exhaustive review um, prior to this discussion. So. Um, I have more work to do here and I'll do it. Um, but, you know, I, I think I, I need to better understand the inability to cope with splitting. Um, it, to me, there, it, it requires, that it implies a certain amount of rigidity in the um, setup and preparation of the copy um a priori that that just is is maybe i just don't fully appreciate at this point um it it seems as though we should be able to be a bit more nimble uh and reactive to um the remapping that a particular layer would be looking to impose um so yeah i just i just i don't want to hold <laughs> You guys back with the discussion here. Um, I have more learning and and review to do. So, so so the way I I mean that that problem the the splitting problem I think that was described by uh, by Martin in his in his slide. I mean the here be dragons. I think that the problem is still there. When, whenever whenever uh, that that uh, he he says it's it's m by n mapping, right? Uh, I think that that part is something. Yeah, if we can do something about it. Uh, it would be great, but but current choice is actually is is that if that happens, uh, the copy offload will basically turn into copy emulation. Uh, regarding splitting and copy offloading, uh, last time I checked uh, patches for copy offloading, I noticed that uh, offset and length are not encoded in the traditional fields in the bio, but rather in the data payload of the bio. I think that's why. Uh, the standard bio split doesn't work for these uh, copy of load requests. I've been wondering whether bio split could be modified so that it inspects the uh, data payload of the bio and uh, does the proper job for splitting these uh, copy of load bios. So uh, one more question I have is, what should be done if device has scheduler? Should we allow copy offload? Should we do not configure copy offload or? Sorry, can I, can I get your question again? Device has what? So if, if the block device has a scheduler and if we want to do copy offload, should we configure it copy offload or how should we deal with that scenario? Well, so maybe <laughs> I, I probably couldn't imagine the problem, but I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that a scheduler would be still be seeing the, the read commands and write commands, and the copy flag would probably be ignored by, I mean, we can choose to do nothing, currently we choose to do nothing about that, and 
and I think whatever it does for read and write, the scheduler maybe we can we can we can be fine with that policy. But I probably didn't really imagine the problem that you have in your head. Would like to you know, would like to see how you know how do you elaborate that problem? Yeah, and you can change the schedule dynamically to between norm and whatever. So you don't want to have to also switch that flag that said copy of form not because you changed the schedule. So you, you have to deal with it. Sa same as DM splitting and mm -hmm. whatnot. Whatever is is in between the user and the device has to be dealt with. And, and if that's a problem, it's always a, a solution to bypass the scheduler. I mean, for when you issue the, the commands, you can bypass yes. this direct insert. Yeah. Uh, if, I, if, I may, if, I, if I may add a, add a point for discussion here, I think what Demi mentioned before with, the, with respect to uh, copy file range uh, and the comments that came from, from Dev, uh, so, if I got that right, uh, here we are talking about, he is at least talking about a ref link based copy. And the ref link based copy, I think that would, uh, that would probably wouldn't require any, any driver level implementation, right? Probably it wouldn't no, require so any. No, so loopback, loop, the, the storage backend of a loopback device is a file system, right? It's a file. And take any file system that has a copy file range, and that's your uh, kind of a device level implementation of the copy of flow. So you just reuse that. You need to uh, uh, code the uh, uh, copy uh, bio uh, support in the loopback driver and just hook that up to, to copy file range, and you're done. You have your device implementation to test everything on top. That's what, that was Dave's point. Yeah, it sounded good to me. Just just wanted to be you know to, to confirm that probably it would not really converse into into uh, into device driver level uh, you know whatever it is maybe if it is. A, but a loopback system. is a block device driver. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's just one implementation to be able to test whatever we you implement whatever plumbing you implement on top. Again, you're sending patches, but we have no way to test anything. We need something. Boom, boom. Okay. So, so the point here is that we need to have loopback support. We need to have memory back, null BLK support, and we need to see block tests. Uh, with respect to with, with respect to um, um, I mean the same point uh, the previous one uh, just to be clear here um, so uh, I think while this would this would be a good way to to basically see what is happening in the block layer but as far as NVMe plumbing is concerned if I'm not wrong probably it would not be I mean that path wouldn't be touched by that right or am I am I uh, have I got it wrong no so if, yeah sending the NVMe plumbing is fine but who has a drive that has copy of load support in today? And well, remember, maybe you have, I don't. Yeah, so yeah, how sure. do I test that? Uh, so no, I need I, a loopback yeah, or yeah, new I block or whatever. Sure. And remember this, sure. the block test is integrated in all the, most of the distros and they run block test on pretty much every release. I agree. And yeah. device independent testing is extremely important. That's why we have so many test cases and so many reports coming out of block test. I agree with so that. So, and in order to continue doing that for s this sort of bigger change going into block layer, we need to have loop and null BLK block test with them. So, I'd like to remind you that the NVMe, the end kernel NVMe target loop back setup would probably get you the full holistic stack testing that you'd want if you use that and you can implement it with oh, copy file range. Use the file backed NVMe target yeah. loop. That's the one to use. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of a, a loop back to uh, similar. Because you could actually, in the, in the target uh, driver, call copy file range there too. Exactly. And yeah. Yes, and we've done this and it, it works fine. So you would, that would give you the full stack with your virtual NVMe target with your file back loop. Yeah. But you still need uh, the backend block device to configure the target, which supports the uh, copy of load, right? <laughs> no, or it will just <laughs> emulate on the target. Okay, no, no, that's the precise point. You don't. Um, the backend implementation is copy file. Target. On the target. Yeah. 
So the only thing you need to do is just hook up the command parsing for the target that's right, and then call copy file and that's yeah. it. So that's that simple to implement. Yeah, but if underlying target backend doesn't support copy offload, then it will resu result back to the emulation in... But it does. That's what I'm saying. So you need a device. No, you don't. No, Your no. implementation... Yeah. In the target, if you set up a target, a Linux target, and implement the proper command parsing for the copy for the copy command, and hook in the com uh, the um, the command to just call copy file. Yeah, for file back target, right? Yeah, for file back yeah. target. Yeah, exactly. So there is not nothing, no hardware dependency on that one. It's just pure software implementation. And I think you know, um, maybe one of the patch there is, is probably already doing that. That if the if it the if it is file mapped, file backed uh, target, it is actually falling back to copy file range. And if it happens to be block based, then it is it is using the block layer uh, copy offload uh, helper in the in the in the current series. We'll see. Uh, I'd like to see patches. Then we can continue sure. the discussion. Yeah. 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 Any uh, any more questions, concerns? So I just looked at the uh, patch set um, as it relates to DM, and um, the implementation is it seems confined to KCopyD. Um, I'm not seeing anything else in DM core other than like initial setup and like the the mechanics of of setting the supported flag in the linear target and that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, the, Mikolash's approach uh, may have been factored in in spirit. Um, I need to look closer at the block code and, and other changes to fully appreciate uh, the design of what is what is being done here. But um, Again, like on entry into DM core, just through like submit bio, um, you know, that that bio, wherever it's, whatever target is, it is destined to, um, it could need to, to be, it could be that the IO needs to be split um, or constrained. Um, you know, like think of thin provisioning. Um, it imposes a particular chunk size or, or, or thin P uh, block size. And um, it, it seems to me that you should be able to cope with reducing the payload uh, by, by, you know, as, as it's implied by a um, split. So, um, I, I completely understand that, you know, an arbitrary remapping to different queues, it, it would negate the whole point of copy offload and, and um, you know, the constraint of having a, the source and destination queue be the same and, and that kind of thing. So um, I'm not looking to, to have this be artificially or, whatever, I, I'm not looking for this to be complex or, or something. It's just by only implementing key copy D and only uh, supporting it if absolutely no splitting uh, is done, it, it is very much constrained um, as it relates to DM. So I'd like to see that improved, but we can take that offline. <laughs> and deal right. with it on the list and stuff. Much out of time. Uh, FS yeah, sorry. Us so we can talk about block tests and F FS tests. Uh, thanks, Shaitanya. Thanks.